Hey everyone, it's Quickshot, and I'm here to build my PC, finally. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> it's been a while. My computer was stolen in the end of June, uh, or the beginning of July. Yeah, when I was illegally evicted. Anyways, this is my new one. It's cost me about $950. Uh, and it's taken me six months to get the money to build it. So uh, let's do this. I'm going to begin by putting on an anti-static wrist band. Unlike the Verge, this is a real one that actually plugs into the wall. That goes in the ground pin and this connects to my wrist. Boom. Okay, see? Ground pin being plugged into the ground of the wall. Okay, done. I don't need this alligator clip, I'll just throw that aside. Okay, and um, I am building on carpet. I'm building on an extra large, uh, you know, mouse pad. So I am going to be plugging my power supply into a grounded surge protector and then yeah see grounded surge protector and this is a uh, it's my phone it's charging um it's low battery and this this video is going to kill the phone and i will be um grounding my motherboard out before i build on it um but let's talk about the components i have here this is uh this is new thermal paste it's arctic silver 5 uh high density i don't know if that matters this is a um, heat sink for my SSD. This is a Samsung SM961. It is the OEM Pro version of the 960 Pro. Uh, you can find these on eBay right now from a seller called My Digital Discount. They are selling them for $169.99. Um, this is a 16 gigabit kit of DDR4 3200 from uh, Crucial. This is um, Crucial Revision E. It is the second best overclocking RAM outside of Samsung B-Die. And I'm going to, I will be overclocking. I'm probably not gonna throw that in the video because that will take a while. Um, and I don't have a proper screen recording software. You basically, to do it right, you need two computers and one recording the other through a capture card, which I do not own anymore because it was stolen when I was illegally evicted. It was inside that last computer. And it, uh, well, you need two computers, one to record the other. So I, don't, I just don't have that capability at the moment. Let's get these out of the way. This is the, the heat sink. I'll show you how to attach that when it gets to that point. This is acetone cleaning wipes. I will be cleaning the thermal paste off of my Ryzen 5 1600s cooler. This came out in 2017. It's old tech, but it's, it was $79.99 before tax at Micro Center, which I just came back from today. And I'm putting this into my motherboard. This is the MSI B450 Tomahawk Max. It is an ATX motherboard. Um, it has BIOS flashback, a bunch of other features on it. It was $94.99 because it was $20 off with a bundle from the CPU. Uh, prior to Monday, it was $30 off, but I didn't get paid till, you know, last night this morning. So I wasn't able to hit up, hit them up for Black Friday. This is a Be Quiet Pure Power 11. It's one of the best power supplies on the market. I chose it specifically for the silence optimized fan. This is an Intel 545S. It is a, I chose this drive based on some conversations with uh, you slash Numax on Reddit. He is an SSD guy. And this drive uh, for SATA drives has really good ECC. So it's better in that aspects for storing footage and working off of. This is the Gigabyte GTX. 1660 gaming OC six gigabyte. It is a triple fan 
1660. When I purchased this, this was the cheapest, or it was the third cheapest 1660 uh, at 219.99 before tax. And uh, two days later, they came out with the 1650 Super. So prior to that, when I purchased this from Amazon on the 20th of November, this was the best card to get that had Turing's NVENC encoder. And that is a hardware encoder specifically for X.264 and um, X.265 encoding, which I will be taking advantage of in gaming and streaming. So let's get started. I, I've already opened all these up. It's not a big deal. This is the CM version. There's the manual. The CM version of the uh, Pure Power 11. This was $79.90 on a uh, new egg. And I'm pulling this out because with it, I will connect to uh, ground. Over there, I have a surge protector that's grounded out. And um, then when I connect this to the motherboard, the motherboard will be grounded through it and with my wrist, and we will be eliminating uh, as much static electricity as I can without owning a table at the moment. I'm working on it, guys, I'm working on it. This is a silence-focused fan from Be Quiet. That's what they're known for, hence the Be Quiet in their name. This is a semi-modular design. This is an eight pin EPS connector. It's actually four plus four and a 24 pin, actually it's 20 plus four pin um, for the ATX connector. So let's uh, plug this in. Oh, and make sure that the uh, circuit is open. So that is off. Um, the reason it's off, but it's still connecting a ground. And that is very important for what I'm trying to do. You don't want it on, not yet. Okay. I'll just take that off. Now, MSI Tomahawk B450, the max version. I have not opened this up yet, so hopefully it's complete. And I'm actually just gonna like put something on this cable to keep it out of the way as much as possible. Okay, set that aside for right now. Let's get that off. This is a driver CD. It's useless, just get rid of it. This is the IO shield. You knew that you need this. Well, you don't need it, but you put it in the back of the case. I have my, uh, this is a holder on my phone that my phone is on. It's on a holder that's connected to the case box. Um, so this will be going inside the case when we get to that point. These are um, power, uh, not power supply, uh, data cables for the motherboard and uh, SSDs. The case sticker. What is this? M.2 screw. I need that. Quick install guides, the motherboard manual. And what is this? Thanks for choosing this product. Oh, register the product. Okay, so on top of the box, I'll be setting the screw aside because I need that later as well. You can actually use the box as a working surface. For the motherboard. begin. This is an anti-static bag. And this is the motherboard. 
This is an ATX size. It's the most common motherboard size. And I chose this motherboard specifically for the VRM and the VRM heatsink. This heatsink can cool properly a Ryzen 9 3950X, which is kind of, which will output way more power than I will ever put through this board. Um, there's a lot of features on here. If you want, you can just look up reviews for it, but we're going to be grounding out this motherboard and then I will be doing a BIOS flashback uh, to update it to the newest version. I already have that downloaded. If you're interested in learning how to do that, you have to figure that out on your own by Google. Not hard. Okay. This is the 24 pin and this is the eight pin EPS connector. So let's angle this down, move this over here. And the 20 and the four pin, they can only go one way. So don't worry about screwing it up too badly. Uh, you really can't. Uh, and this is gonna connect that, this 20 and the four pin connect here. Okay, whatever. They screw in. And no, I got it. Okay, come on. Uh, that connects and connected. They oh, my wristband came off out of the strap. Okay, moving this to the surge protector one and then connected, we're going to yep. plug it in. And it just snaps into place. And this is the EPS connector. This provides power to the CPU. Again, these connect together. And they go in one way. Now, if you're building a computer yourself, you might have more. Oh, this thing is just coming straight out. It doesn't want to stay. You know, inside and stay. Ground me. Thank you. I'm going to push over here. Okay, now I'm grounded out. So I am going to put the flash drive into the... Uh, this flash drive has been formatted. These are super cheap at Micro Center. There is a, oh, let's turn it on. So now my power supply is switched to on and the BIOS flashback one is, oh, okay, let's break out that motherboard manual real quick. Quick start, power connectors, rear I.O., 23, page 23 of the manual. USB flash port is this one at the bottom here, right next to the, the button. So, right, this is the button. So this is the flashback port. So you're just gonna plug that in. This is a USB 3.0 flash drive and press the button. Or do you hold the button? Uh, it's one or the other, let's figure it out. Page 41 for flashback. Okay, there's an LED here that should flash. So let's... Uh, I'm not getting an LED light. There it goes, there it goes. The fan on my power supply is spinning now. And... Okay, 
this might take a few minutes, so. So, gonna wait it out real quick. I'm going to make a cut and come back when it's finished. Well, hopefully I didn't ruin anything because it would, the BIOS flashback would not flash. So, I don't know, the button wouldn't flash. It would flash three times and turn off, or it wouldn't flash at all. The power supply would spin. I don't know. Uh, let's, I guess let's keep building. <laughs> I gotta get CM wipes here. Open says me. Acetone cleaning wipes. Reground myself. There we go. And uh, let's install the CPU. So, where's my CPU box? There it is. CPU box. Let's uh, go ahead and open her up. Sticker is nope, it's a serial number on it. Come on. It's got that little safety thing on it. Okay. I just noticed I didn't have the safety cover on my uh, motherboard at all. There's supposed to be one there, to my knowledge, but there wasn't. AMD processor, case sticker, there's my Ryzen 5 1600. And this is supposed to be a freaking wrist strap popped out again. Stay grounded, Jesus. A Wraith Spire. This is the original Wraith Spire with the copper plug. The new ones don't have the copper plug. Look at that. I had to go and buy a screwdriver for this. Now I'm going to clean that thermal paste off because this is old thermal paste. And my understanding is it's basically like glue. I got to grab a screwdriver real quick. I'll be right back. Uh, screwdriver. Okay. Now this is called a zero insertion force socket. You take your CPU, careful the pins. This is a pin grade array, not a land grade array like an Intel consumer uh, CPU. I don't need case stickers. This arm, oh, ESD protection. This arm hinges upwards. The CPU comes out of the package. Now, there's a triangle right here. And that triangle matches up with the triangle right here on the motherboard. And the CPU drops in with no force. It just fits in the pins. And then this arm comes down and hooks over like that. And it's super simple. That's how you install a CPU. Now I'm gonna take an acetone cleaning wipe. Whew, oh, oh, the acetone. Okay, I'm gonna clean off the CPU. I don't have to, but mainly I'm cleaning off the thermal paste from the, uh, the cooler here. 
and we're going to be applying brand new thermal paste this is brand new for me I've never never had to install thermal paste before or use thermal paste um, this is my second PC build ever my first one was a actually it was the same uh, CPU different motherboard and we just use the stock thermal paste. And this thing is not staying grounded. I'm starting to see why no one bothers with those. Let's make sure that this is completely clean. Okay, clean. So, this is Arctic Thermal compound and all you need is a pea-sized dot in the center and I've never done this before so the center there you go that's like a maybe a pea and a half that's fine it'll spread out with the cooler Uh, I should remove these first. I'll do that right now. These br are brackets for other cooler designs, but you use the same back plate, magnetic screwdriver, super helpful. See this sticking out right here? That is the uh, backing, the, the back plate on the back. And I just keep that in place because I do not need to remove that. Okay, now the cooler is going to go on, and this is the CPU fan header right there. So I need to put the cooler on so that this fan header plugs in there. And I can either do it this way, or I can put it on this way, and not enough room to wrap it around there. So, let's see, I can do it that way, that's kind of ugly, or I can do it like this, and just plug it in like that. And that's probably what I'm gonna do. I don't see it fitting any other way. Yeah, I'm just gonna wrap around here. Come up and go up in there. So it's gonna connect there. Wrist strap came off again. About ready to just throw this stupid thing away. See this mounts either that way or this way yeah this way i wish i could have this facing up but that's just not how the cookie crumbles and this comes down on the mother on the uh the back plate and then it just screws down in place There's one side and the other side. Okay, that's not really going down, so let's pull this up. Ah. 
There's better tutorials on how to build a PC on the internet than right here. sides come up okay so that's on 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 so that's on uh eh, it seems a little sketchy putting it on compared to what you would think and then when that squishes down it spreads the thermal paste over and yes it is down all the way on the cpu there's the back plate and we're good to go so you basically want to put everything on the computer that you can um, before you put it in the case and I'm probably going to do a test boot into the BIOS just to see that it works and that I didn't brick it first. So uh, next I need to install the RAM. This just opens up. RAM sticks. Now you only need two of these. Let me plug this in and get it out of the way. It plugs straight down and tuck this out of the way as much as we can. That might just hang out there forever. Not a big deal. And let's take this, make sure this thermal paste is capped and get it out of the way. Uh, motherboard manual time which slots for the RAM. Page four, installing DDR4 memory. DIMM A2 and DIMM B2, which is going to be, uh, let's see, are they labeled? Because I'm pretty sure it's this one and this one, or the other way around. No, it is, it's this one and this one. So you have to lower these, these down, you take your RAM kit. Now keep in mind they only install one way. There's a notch on the RAM and they slide into the motherboard. Uh, super easy. Slide in, then you just gotta push them down and it snaps in place. wrist strap just came off again about ready to just chunk this thing stay same deal it only goes in one way and that's how you install RAM if you're installing two sticks you would populate all four of them obviously one is this one and two is that one and this is dual channel it has about 20 percent more memory bandwidth than if you only ran in single channel 
which would be this first two slots here or just this one for two for one stick of RAM. Now I have, I'm going to install my M.2 SSD. My M.2 SSD is going to be going right here and it is going to serve two purposes for me. It is the boot drive and it holds the programs. Uh, so it's two purposes and it's my cache drive. Uh, program cache for video editing. It's, it's, it's gonna be huge for speeding it up. So, here's my SSD, but I will be putting it inside a heat sink. I have little screws and a screwdriver, thermal pads, And this is the heat sink. It's gonna sandwich the, the chip. You peel the sticker off, the top of it, okay, I'm just getting rid of this wrist strap, it's worthless. Okay, Verge, at least I tried. You take the sticker off, those flash chips, only the controller needs to be cooled. This cools all of them and, well, actually it spreads the heat out about all of them. Um, you don't need to cool the flash. Uh, there's some information out there that it hurts performance or it doesn't do anything and it probably does nothing. But now there's staples in this. Here's my SSD. This is an extremely fast SID, SSD and uh, it has an, a crazy good price on it. Peel the sticker off. Nope, stop trying to do that sticker. Stay together. Now you're gonna to wanna to keep the sticker for the serial number in case you ever need to warranty it out uh, through my digital discount. And that's the NAND. This is the controller, and I believe these are the NAND chips, and that is something else. Yeah, this is an extremely fast drive. Yeah, my thermal pads. I have three thermal pads on here. I'm not quite sure why I have three if I only need two. Um, I'll be using the blue one on the bottom and the fatter one on top, I believe. No, nope, the blue one on the bottom. And the red one The blue one on top of the chips and the red one on the bottom because all it does is connect this to the the bottom plate. Killing the stickers off. Come on. 
peel that off. So this is a thermal pad. Gotta lay it on the chip. And a little bit more upward. Okay. Come on, stupid thermal pads. I've never done this before, so first time. You can probably tell. So that's covering the chips. I do want to get them on the edge. Okay, not on the connector. Okay, <laughs> not perfect, but you know, usable. And the bottom one, come on. Bottom one is only sticking on one side, and it doesn't appear that that peels off, which is fine. So this one's gonna go in the bottom here. It's just gonna lay inside this. Make sure that the M.2 screw hole is not covered up. There and this, this is going to go on top, like so. Mm, that's not in the way the screw, and then they get screwed into the side there. So I'm gonna make a cut and come right back when this is finished. Okay, we're back. Now this is the uh, heat sink, M.2 heat sink, fully screwed in. And this takes, uh, transfers heat away from the drive and dissipates it through here. And it slides into the spot right here. So this, it, it angles up. There's a little notch there. It angles up and it just clicks in and just sits back down. You need to grab your M.2 screw Now, when I put an M.2 in a pre-built I owned previously, it did not come with one. So I had to go and buy a laptop repair kit just to get the proper screw. Super annoying. I had to go to Fry's because no one had it. Okay, and that's it. That's installed. That is an M.2 heatsink on top of an M.2 drive. And that will allow, um, it's not under the graphics card, so allow airflow through here and the case fans are gonna blow air through here and extract it out here. So uh, any heat dissipating through this will be carried away so that it can continue to do its workloads while I am like generating optimized media in DaVinci Resolve or other things. So now that that's in, I am going to install the graphics card, 
plug it into my monitor and do a test boot um, to see if I broke anything. So, quality box because it's a quality part. This is the only triple fan, the only triple fan GTX 1660 and 1660 Super. Currently, at least. Periodically, I'm going to touch the power supply just to make sure that I'm not uh, keeping any static on top of me. Out of the way. Now, you pull this out of the package, but here's what you gotta do first. Yep, that's it. This is a lock. This pushes down, you install the graphics card, it'll click in. I'm gonna be removing the graphics card to install it in my case, which is right here. You can see the bottom of the box there. Um, but for right now, these fans spin in the opposite direction of each other. So these two spin the same way and this one spins differently so that the wind goes this way and that way and it doesn't conflict, or at least that's what Gigabyte's marketing says. It uses one eight pin power connector um, from my GPU and I don't have an HDMI yet or a DisplayPort monitor. So this is the HDMI one. I'll just leave the other plugs in. This is the, that comes out and install it real quick. This overhangs the end of the box. And it clicks in. So as you can see, it's overhanging a bit, as you can't see. Let me adjust the camera position. Okay, let's not adjust the camera position because I'm running out of space. Let's move the power supply over and move the motherboard box up. Okay then. So I need to plug this in. So I have a bundle of cables and I'm going to select the one for the graphics card. These are different cables for different things. However, right now I need one with an eight pin and connects to the, uh, the power supply. So like this, PCI one right here, PCI one. I'm gonna connect that here. And it just pops in and then this comes over it's much more elegant inside the case and it only goes one way this is called a six plus two connector because some PSUs do not need all eight no wait let me make sure that's on there right connect And that's in and I'll gonna make a cut and I'll be right back okay so I just shorted out the power switches um, to get a test boot going and I did and hey oh oh you can't see it that well 
from this angle. But yes, I am in fact getting anything here. Uh, is recognizing my Ryzen 5 16 6 core processor, uh, my RAM in dual channel DDR4 2400. Uh, all 16 gigs is uh, connected. It knows that I have nothing connected. Detecting devices, device changed, or CMOS has been cleared. Please enter setup to configure your system. Press F1 to run setup. Press F2 to load default values and continue. That's all I needed. That's all I need to, to verify is that I didn't, like, you know, brick it. So, and I didn't. So I am going to um, turn it off now and show you guys how I did that. I used a screwdriver to short two pins. These pins right here are the front panel. So watch me turn. See how the, the fans are spinning? And now all the LEDs turned off. I have no signal and the fans should stop. I just restarted it. I wasn't trying to restart it, I was trying to turn it off. Come on. switch is six and eight on JFP1. JFP1 is here. Okay. No, I turned you off. Okay. I didn't hold it down long enough. Now it's off. Uh, so that's a success. Um, I'll update the BIOS later. I didn't brick it. So from this point, I am going to disconnect everything, um, pull the case out of the box, and start working from there. So let's freaking do this. Okay, we're back. This is a Cooler Master H500. The, not the H500P, not the H500P mesh, not the NZXT H500, but the Cooler Master H500. Yes, that is a problem. A confusing mess, not really a problem, it's confusion. So, inside this case, I've removed the back, the front, the front panel wire mess up here. I have pushed outside there, so it's not in our way at the moment. And I have done some things you might notice right now. I've removed the power supply shroud. The power supply shroud sits in here like that, and it serves one purpose and one purpose only, to block air. What do I mean by that? Well, quite simply, your power supply has a fan on it. This fan, well, in this particular case, this is a high quality, silence focused fan. So this will spin, or uh, this way, it will spin and it's taking air from the case and throwing it out the back. Now, with that shroud in place, there's actually a dust filter here in the bottom. Cooler Master intends for you to mount it this way and draw air out the bottom, filtered air from the bottom of the case and exhaust it out the rear through this fan. I will not be doing that. I mean, I'm gonna keep this in place so I don't lose it but I'm not using it that way. I will be extracting air from inside the case. These are two 200 millimeter fans. They are big fans. Um, this is a 120 millimeter rear exhaust. So what that does is help balance out the airflow intake to exhaust while improving temperatures on my graphics card because it doesn't have that shroud. Um, 
well, shrouding <laughs> the, the fans. Uh, so the graphics card will sit in this slot, in this slot, and that will fix a lot of problems. It's actually not a problem, but I'm preemptively doing that. I also took out the hard drive cage. They are, where did I put them? There's a mess of boxes forming around me and like open packages. Uh, oh, come on, I just had it. Oh, I put it inside the box. That's why. Please don't tip over the camera. This is a hard drive caddy. It usually sits like in here. I removed it. This is the slide inside. On these rails. Like so, you put a hard drive here, you put a hard drive there, it slides in and out. Anyways, I don't like hard drives, they're slow, and I'm trying to go all SSD for forever, for the rest of my life, all SSD. Uh, say no to hard drives. Uh, budgets notwithstanding, uh, under, everyone's understanding of a budget, trust me, I've spent six months uh, collecting the parts for this computer. Okay, so that being said, I'm going to install the power supply. Fan up. Let's just slot in the back here, like so. It's secured by a single thumb screw. Okay. Okay, I do have to move this though to be able to install it. Ah. This is not the easy way of doing it. This is the, hey, a camera way. And filming it on the floor. Okay, so it's lined up right here. And I will be installing this thumb screw there. And those thumbnails are intended for the back of the case, but I'll use it for right now to secure up here. You only need one really just to keep it in spot in place. These are for the back panel, these two, and I have access to Actually, I have four access points on this power supply. But it is installed, and in this position, it will be exhausting air out the bottom of the case and intaking from inside the case. Now, I didn't remove the GPU connector because that is gonna stay in but this and this are going to be routed out of these holes at the bottom for cable management. The only thing that will fail is if I can't reach the motherboard because the EPS connector is going to be at the top. So this has to come around and attach like so. If it doesn't work, then I might be forced to flip the power supply and I'll be a little pissed. Um, a 24 pin, this just needs to come through here or here, so that's fine.
Okay. Straighten this out. Put this back down. Okay, so this motherboard, uh, sorry, this case has two motherboard screws installed. Now, there are numerous uh, motherboard screws here. The ones with A are for ATX, the ones with M are for micro ATX, and the ones for I are for mini ITX. Now, I'm using an ATX case, so I'm going to be using uh, six, uh, nine standoffs throughout and I have to install them. So the, the box is gonna come with them like this. And it has a little socket. This side goes on the standoff and that side goes on a screwdriver so you can screw the, them in. So let's do this. this and they just screw in these holes Make sure the pre-installed one is tight. It is.
Okay, those are installed. And so what I'm gonna do, uh, I'm going to plug in the, the GPU or the PSU just to make sure that I'm still grounded. The switch is off. Good. Now I'm going to grab uh, the motherboard. Now the motherboard has the RAM, the CPU, the CPU cooler, and the SSD installed, uh, the NVMe SSD, and this is to uh, put everything on the board that you can right now so you don't have to do it later. Yay! Oh, wait, 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 wait. Before I do this, I almost did the cardinal sin. Can't forget this. This is an M.2 shield. Make sure you don't cut yourself. It's super easy. Now, you're gonna have to install this to the correct orientation, which is going to be like this, going backwards like that. You have to install it from inside the case. That's why if you forget about it, you can't put it back. Also, some people hate these. So that's installed, and now it's time for the motherboard. Don't want to forget that. So this is just, it's going to go in. You can line up with the motherboard connectors on the I.O. We have it in correctly, and it will just like, snap into place. And as you can see, the, uh, what do you call them, standoffs line up with the holes making sure that that's through all the way. It does appear so. Okay. Not. Oh, I gotta put back the power supply uh, filter so I don't forget, not because I'm gonna use it. Might as well keep it in place even though it will not be used. So that's in place uh, and I am going to connect the power supply and the EPS connector so that I'm um, grounding out the motherboard again. So I'm going to come up and take the EPS connector Sorry, not the EPS connector. The 24 pin, I'm gonna route it through the second hole. So that's going to come up here at the top. And it only connects one way.
So that's installed. Oh, I forgot something. Okay, before I get ahead of myself, I need to screw in the motherboard. Little screws like this, magnetic screwdriver, make it easy on yourself. Go into the standoffs. Secure the motherboard. Don't get ahead of yourself. Watch build guides from people like Tech Deals and Paul's Hardware. And uh, try to avoid building on carpet. Now the reason that uh, ATX, all ATX motherboards fit in here is because it's a standard. ATX, EATX, SSIB, that's probably incorrect how you say that. Um, some other things, they're all standardized. Not all cases, this middle one is sometimes a locator pin on some cases. It was like that in the NZXT H500 that I built in previously for a friend. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I, uh, it is now secure. Cool. I have a lot more screws and standoffs and I am not quite sure what they're for. These have got to be spares for the case. So let me make sure that I don't lose any of these and put them all back in the bag. Yeah, there's a lot of like, is that just seriously extra standoffs? Like a ton of them. Good job, Cooler Master. Look at all these extra stuff. Some of these are probably needed for securing uh, other things as well. Uh, extra fan screws. Uh, it's just a bag of extra screws. I like it. Very nice. Just a bunch of extra hardware. Hold on to that bad boy. So that's installed. Now let's get the uh, EPS connector installed. This is the EPS connector. It's the external power. Oh, it's gonna fit, it's gonna fit. This is gonna come up here 
through this. There's a hole at the top right here. Sorry. I want to come up through here. And then it's just going to twist around and make sure I have all the slack on it that I can. Hey guys, I'm back. Uh, I mean, this is, I'm gonna edit it so you don't know too much what happened. There's gonna be a weird cut. So what happened is my phone ran out of storage. Um, but I got the EPS connector on um, and I fixed two things that I did wrong. I had the uh, thumbnails on the power supply. Those were, that was incorrect. I now, or thumb screws, not thumbnails. And I now have the proper screws holding the power supply in, all four. And I had to fix my rear I.O. panel because I had the little metal prongs on top of here and on top of there preventing it from being fully seated. Um, but now that I've fixed that, you can see they are on top of the I.O. here. These guys, they were like inside the I.O. So that's bad and not what I wanted to do. Okay, I'm back. Focus, thank you. Okay, um, so I have, so the EPS connector, it is long enough from stretching from the, uh, the power, oh, come on, the power supply. It does in fact fit, it wasn't easy. Um, I had to connect one pin at a time, but I got it. This isn't too much of a bend. It's not perfect, uh, and there's not much I can do about it because I can't get like custom cables or anything. So that's there to stay forever. I don't ever plan on upgrading that. The CPU and the GPU, yes, but not that. Never need a reason to upgrade that. Okay, so there's a... Uh, Basically, I think I got cables to do now. So let's install some cables. Um, let's get the graphics card installed. There's, so the graphics card, oh, come on. It's gonna sit right here on the CPU slot, so I need to take these screws out here and pull these slot covers out. Where did I put the screwdriver at? Right oh, got it. This top one uh, is still there. I'm not using it on this motherboard. Other motherboards might have a spot or something right there for a PCIe by one slot. This is a by one uh, slot, and you can put things like Wi Fi cards and things like that. Um, but not on this motherboard, which is perfectly fine for me. Okay, that's, you know, that's, let's pretend I didn't just drop that. Uno. Or is it una? I don't, I can't. It's always confusing to me which word is what in Spanish because, and that fell as, as well. Cool, cool, cool. Um, I finally resorted to just putting my, uh, ESD strap in the wall and just touching it every now and then uh, just you know just to make sure um, But you can also touch the power supply to my knowledge just touching the power supply is also good enough So now that I have those two out Take my graphics card And it just Fits in there. Oh wait 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 Don't get ahead of yourself And then the screws just go back and they hold it in place. These, uh, the GPU is covering up, as you can see here. Oh no, I just knocked over my glass of water. These are SATA 
right angle SATA connectors. There's actually four here. So the NVMe SSD disables SATA 5 and SATA 6 on this motherboard. So I only have SATA 3 and 4 and SATA 1, ah, 1 and 2. So not a big deal um, for me having four SATA connectors and an NVMe is ideal or actually perfectly fine. Um, there's a the budgetary reasons on why I prefer this. Anyways, um, I didn't disconnect the CPU, the GPU connector. So let's just go and go ahead and connect this. This is going to go here. And if you do use the power supply shroud, this would connect to it. Uh, this would go through that little hole. I'm not using the power supply shroud and I am doing this out of order. I didn't connect the screws. Okay, whatever. Okay, so that's in. Um, and I didn't connect these screws cause I'm, you know, getting ahead of myself. Also, can you tell this is only my second time? Not a pro. Not a pro. Not screwing that down all the way till I get them both in there, just so I can get an even seating of the graphics card. So make sure these are up so that I can wiggle the graphics card. And I'm going to push up on the graphics card and tighten these down. Now I'm pushing up so to help prevent sagging the graphics card, the PCIe slot does is a uh, quote unquote armored. It, it has like steel around it to give it more strength because graphics cards can get really big and really heavy and that just helps keep it up, tighten it down so that it doesn't fall down as much so you don't have as much sag. So connect it there and connect it there. And keep in mind, for AMD builds, you do not, uh, unless you have an APU installed, and this is just a CPU, an APU, um, like the Ryzen 3 2200G, 2400G, or like an Athlon, or what do they call it now, the A3000G, those have integrated graphics. Um, Intel normally has integrated graphics, but that's not true all the time anymore. Um, if you're spending about as much money as I am on the CPU, actually you'd be spending more on like a 9400F that does not have integrated graphics uh, at all. So uh, this is uh, better for my use case than a 9400F because this has uh, simultaneous multi-threading. The 9400F does not have hyper-threading, which is Intel's trademarked term describing the same idea. Anyways, oh, this battery right there watch battery is uh called a cmos battery it it's kind of like a, a battery in your car remote it just provides power to it um it keeps the settings on the bios chip to where it should be so that's connected i am going to be this is going to come down like this and i'm going to zip tie or tie that off down here um, but after uh, later not right now um, I do have a SATA cable that I'm going to use uh, I was given two SATA cables with the motherboard if I need more I'll have to buy more um, for now two is fine one is straight and one is right angled I'm going to grab the right angled one package so 
So this connects into the SSD. Let me show you how. Uh, where's my SSD at? <clears throat> Hopefully my breathing isn't too bad on the video. When I in post, I might be able to help remove some of it if it is in the editing process. Ah, oh, dude, I need, I need like a table and chairs. Okay, here's the SSD. Uh, this is a Intel 545S, 512 gigabyte. I thought I was, I was trying to buy two and Fry's canceled on me. They had one for 44 bucks on clearance and they canceled on me. But anyways, this connector right here is going to plug in here and, uh, and this one plugs into this one, sorry, this one on the SSD. And I'm going to be putting this, uh, this is gonna go mount on the back. I'll show you guys how I do that later. But for right now, this is going to go right there and it just clicks in then I'm gonna feed the cable through the bottom and up like that this is uh nope that's SATA 2 I want SATA 1 SATA 1 there we go and this is just gonna feed through here and no one's the wiser uh, you're yeah perfectly fine so cool, cool beans. Um, what else do I need to do up here? Oh, I need a cable, I need to route a cable back through there and then I can start connecting my front panel IO. Oh, these are the cables I have left from the power supply. It's just bundled here, let me show you what we got. Uh, this is a SATA chain. So this connects uh, to the other part of the SSD. This part. And you can connect on this cable three. Three of them. This is gonna go in the back, you can't see it, but this is going to connect to the power supply. So allow me to sh demonstrate. Is the case. Let's pick that up and Drives, drives, drives. So I'm just gonna put it in the back one to push it back as far as I can. Uh, hmm. I don't have a shorter one, do I? This other one uh, is another static chain. No, it's a little different. SATA, SATA, some sort of four pin connector. This one's kind of the same. It's just a different connector for a different use. And I do have a second uh, connector for, I can do either a second GPU with an eight pin or a GPU with two eight pins, or an eight and a six. You know, it's whatever's needed. Um, this motherboard does not support like two full slot size graphics cards. What do I say? This one is PCIe 2.0 by four through the chipset. So instead of being connected directly to the CPU through the motherboard, it's going, the whatever device it is, to the chipset and back. So I might put a capture card here in the future. Um, or who knows, one day maybe a 10 gigabit uh, NIC uh, to upgrade the data transfer speeds if I ever get like a NAS, which is a network attached storage. It's, uh, eventually I would run out of uh, space here. If I got super crazy, I'd have no choice but to get a NAS. Uh, if I do get like a dedicated 4K camera and do a lot of stuff like this all the time, like some of the big tech YouTubers, uh, which would be super cool. It's just like, you know, gotta know what you're getting into. Yeah. Anyways. Um, so grabbing that cable I need. This one. It connects, it 
so many cables already. You can't really see what I'm doing. I can't really see what I'm doing either. Oh, come on. All right, I'm gonna put this cable in. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I got that cable connected and routed through the back. So um, what I'm gonna do next is my front IO. I'm considering taking this off. It hides the rear bundle of, you know, mess. <clears throat> ah, it looks a lot better with it on. Uh, I don't think it hampers airflow too bad. This is completely open. Um, and this is much lower than that and it's before the GPU. It's fine. I'm just gonna leave it. It's not like the shroud where um, it would stop the GPU from working as an exhaust and um, technically blocks off some airflow on the graphics card. You remove that and now you've just opened up this whole area. Because um, most cases, the shroud is like all the way across. Yeah, I don't, shrouds stop using them. Unless you're Shroud the, you know, gamer on Mixer. Did you know he moved to Mixer? Yeah, best of luck, Shroud. I basically follow one person on Mixer. Irrelevant. Okay, let's do this. Move the camera up. That's gonna be cut. Okay, there's a uh, magnetic dust cover that I'll be putting back on here. So this is my front I.O. This big gobbly gook of cables coming out here. It's the fans, it's the front I.O., it's everything, and th not this one. Um, but I can tell you what they are from the end of the cable. So this is the USB 3.0 connector and a one can support two, hence why there's two off of it. So this is gonna be routed through the back and up through this hole that I have my finger through that you can't see. That hole right here, this cable just gets stuck through here and routed in. So here is that, and the uh, here is the USB 3.0 connector. There's the connector on the motherboard, and this is just going to, it only fits in one way. I kind of wish this was like a right angle. Okay, only clips in one way. USB 2, USB 1, K. <sighs> Next cable, that's the SATA, SATA cables. The next cable that I'm going to do is, let's see, this is for the fans. Sorry, this is for the fans. I'm not 100% sure what that is yet. I'll figure that out soon. So I don't, I'm not trying to connect the fans yet. These little cables are also the fans. Um, I believe so. Yeah, these are fans. Let's get that out of the way and let's just get the front IO in. So these bundles are USB. No, this is HD audio. This is USB. And these are the front panel connectors. Do you remember when I shorted out that piece earlier? Yeah, that's the front panel connector. So if the only other case I worked on was a NZXT H500, this was just a straight up connector that just plugged in. Um, and that only works on certain motherboards. They had a breakout too if you needed it, but I didn't need it on the ASRock AB350 Pro 4 but I need these on this one, because that's all it came with, so. That's gonna go through here, and this is 
HD audio and USB, so I need to figure out where to route these real quick. Com, USB 1, USB 2. So this is going to go to USB 1. And it's going to be routed through the same hole here, I believe. Yep. Okay. USB 1. Be mindful of the plug. It only goes in one way. Don't bend the pins. JUS You know what? I'm going to look at the manual real quick. I don't want to plug it into the wrong thing. drive reset switches in JFP1 Connectors, peripheral devices, installing graphics card, front panel header, DDR4 memory, motherboard. Okay, right here, these two ports next to the USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports on the front. Uh, so, yep, either that one or that one. Or both, not sure. Let's find out. That's what I was looking at before, so let's put that in now. in all the way down cool and is that it no no the front panel connector here these are I don't know what's this one Front panel I.O. HD audio. And I think HD audio is out the rear. This one's going to go through here. I believe audio 
is here. The pins will tell me what's what. It will only connect up one way. Okay, now. Uh, yep, that is correct. HD audio is at the back here and it will only connect one way because uh, of the way the pins are. So, just twists around. Am I, are you seeing this? It's this one on this, this motherboard. All right, that's on there. And JTPM1. All right, this is the fun stuff, the little tiny connectors. Let's pull this through. Let's give them as much working room as I can for these little guys. And back to the motherboard, manual. JFP1, these lights need to be, uh, see there's no pin, that's reserved, reset switch, reset switch, power switch, power switch. So it's gonna look like this. Hard drive, LED, reset switch. You only connect. Hard drive LED, hard drive LED. So where is this? Hard drive LED is one and three plus and minus with one and three with one being the plus. So this has got to be this way. One and three is the bottom two with the plus on the right side. No, that's wrong. That's the wrong one. It's the one next to it. JFP1. That's JTP. I need JFP1. So positive on the right. Correct. Correct. Okay. Hard drive LED connected. Now, the pins next to it, the pins that go in five and seven are reset switches. So five and seven is the reset switch. Power switch, power LED, reset switch. Is this marked? This does not look marked. Reset switch goes in the two next to it. See, when NZXT just put the one connector, so, so, so much easier than this. There's no wondering, there's no reading, it's just throw it on and done. Okay, now that's in. Now two and four. Power LED plus, power LED minus. So power LED plus goes two. Okay, well those are separate. Power switch. I 
know how crucial it is to have one side the other. Maybe. It can't be that big of a deal or else people would be blowing things up all the time. So that's gonna go there on these two. And now these are individual, so power LED positive. Power LED positive is two, power LED negative is four. Camera. Ugh, sorry guys. Gotta get this connected. All right, I'm gonna get these connected. I'll be right back. Okay, I got it. <laughs> So this is SATA 1, USB 3.0. This is the uh, USB 2.0 on the front panel header. I believe that's only one. One, two, three, four, five. So the rat, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Boom, done. Front panel connector's done. So, <sighs> moving on. <sighs> okay, now this is the rear of the case. There's a wall that goes here, not a wall, a door, so to speak. Uh, Ooh, I gotta figure out my fans going real quick. I guess I, I should do the fans now. Uh, this third one, I'm not sure where, how to handle it. Um, not quite sure. Last time, all I had was fans. This time, I got a little bit more than just fans. I got extra screws, things that look like this. What is that, Molex? I don't know, I don't know. I've never used a Molex connector. I think I need to use this to control the LEDs, uh, but I'm not sure. RGB goes there. So that goes in here. Like that. But then this needs to connect to something. And what does this one do? Is this for another fan? Oh, it is, it's for a third fan. So that's just gonna get clipped. And this gotta connect to something. That's SATA. Oh, this is powered by SATA. Oh. Oh, okay. Um, this is the SATA, the SATA chain I had earlier. The three things on it. And this is just gonna... Pins to pins. Like that. Boom, that's how it's powered. Oh, well that was easy. Uh, and then it's just a hard button uh, to change the... Oh wait, there's a switch here. What? I don't think this, I don't think this motherboard has the, the thing on, I don't, this case doesn't have a button on the top for these, otherwise it would, uh, I would see where that goes. This is definitely a Molex. I just have no use for a Molex connector. Oh, for powering it off of Molex. Well, we're using SATA. Um, so that's the RGB. This is the fans. So they come down like this. Right? 
right. So the, this is a connector here. So that's a three pin to a three pin, which splits off into this thing, which is the other fan. So this, is that gonna go there? How does this fit? That doesn't fit. No, that doesn't fit. I don't know what this one is for. I have no idea what this is for. This is the power. It's the RGB. So there's two things coming off of each fan and they are connected together. They come out to these two connectors. The three pin. And that doohickey. What the hell am I looking at? I need to find the manual, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and uh, turns out I don't even need those. Um, it's just like an extender. So I'm just gonna disconnect that and I'm just gonna plug the cables directly into the motherboard uh, for power. And one more thing I'm doing is the RGB connector that I have here. I am just going to, uh, I disconnected the uh, SATA connector that powers that little, um, this piece here and I'm just gonna plug it straight into the motherboard so I can control it via software. Uh, so this is gonna go down in the front, somewhere. This is the front up here or the back of the case. I'm gonna figure out where that goes. Um, and the fans in a second. So I gotta flip everything around uh consider it a cut here okay back um time to connect these up there's jrgb1 it is up here so i'm gonna loop this down and up through that connector there keep in mind the places that i am looping these through are where the power supply shroud would be normally you can't do this in this spot unless you remove the shroud and don't put it back which is fine because you probably should be doing that anyways is that the stupid connector right here it is come up through here and then rgb1 there's an arrow on that side and what side does that arrow need to point now uh motherboard manual come back to me JRGB, one, two, three, four, arrow, Not sure if it matters. Okay, that's installed. Now the fan headers, I fed up here, uh, uh, you couldn't really see what I was doing there. My bad. So a fan connector is something like this. There's a four pin connector, but I only need three pins. And there's a little handy thing on there that was put for me. So 
this the other one? No, here's one. System Fan 3. There's a pump fan. This is for, uh, you know, water cooling. So I'm gonna put this one up here. Just wanna make sure it's the right fan for the right one. Three pin fan, so this is going to connect. there. Didn't I do that with this one though? What did I do with this one? Ah. Hope my hair looks good. Yeah, it connects there. Fan three, system fan four. Let's just connect in, push in. No, oh, like that. And now the fan connector. The other fan connector, and that's LED. No, where'd it go? Ah, uh, hidden. I hid it from me. Okay, here we go. There's this one. Okay, I still have another fan connector down here on the bottom of the case. So this is system fan one. This is system fan two. This is system fan three and four. Um, I have a pump header up there. And what else do I have here? I have another connector for USB, so if I have more USB 2.0. JTPM, I'm not quite sure what that is, and there's a weird little 2P in there. That was, wasn't I looking at a 2-pin weird one earlier? Yeah. No, that's not a receiver for it. Anyways, I eliminated that thing, don't need it. So, Okay, I think this is done for now until I have to do the cable management. It's a good looking motherboard though. It's black and red. I'm gonna use like red lighting. All my uh, RGB is red, my keyboard's red, my headphones are red, my keyboard is stuck red, so I just turn everything else red. So these will be red, and I'll have red RGB everywhere. And I'll turn the brightness all the way down. And so the red and the black, and it's AMD, so the red really matches Gigabyte. I'll set this to red, and that'll be golden. Okay, now let's SSD on the back. <sighs> Okay. So, touching my ESD again. Bring out the. Bring out your dad. The brand new. 
SSD 5 Intel 545S. It's shiny. Anyways, they are, these weird little standoff things are in fact for the SSD. They screw in these holes. Like that. So I'll be right back with all four of these installed. Done. Okay, that's finished. And then these literally just press in here. That's it. That's how you hold the, uh, you can put two back here like that. Pretty neat. Uh, I like that. And then uh, I'll connect everything up. So this is in the way, this is in the way. Here's my uh, SATA. So, connect three uh, SATA connectors with this connector. So let's just go for the end one so the rest of the cables can just be pushed out of the way. And the pins are there and the pins are on the bottom there. Okay. You know what, I can just I can just take this off and connect them up and put it back. Smarter, not harder. So there's that. And I have my nope. Where to go? Where's my loose connector from my power supply? Here it is. This is the SATA power. This is the SATA data. Uh, reverse that. This is SATA data. This is SATA power. This is going to connect like that. It just snaps on there. That saves in place. And that's that. And then I'm going to angle this down. Make sure that nothing's in the way. He says as he literally connected it in the way. Come on. Sure that that's free and that's free and that goes back in there and this has got to be routed underneath all or over doesn't matter underneath this garbage come on and then this one as well underneath this garbage okay now reconnecting this is easy just snaps in place and then this as well just snaps in place in the way and then this will just this is hitting those cables okay drop it around this mess and back and now I have the clearance snap it in
moves it down. That'll go there. That'll pass over that. Perfect, so that's in there. Okay, not perfect, but good enough. Now, it's cable management time, because I believe that's all the components that I bought to install on this thing. Uh, 950 bucks, ladies and gentlemen, $950. Uh, I mean, with thermal paste and taxes on some of the parts. Some of the stuff was purchased on Newegg before they started charging tax in the state of Texas. So anything routed over here, uh, that can be all tied up over there. However, okay, let's go, come on. Okay, anything coming in here the back of the socket needs to be tied out of the way. So this is the EPS 12 volt. So I can tie it off right here, tie down point. And I have, it came with a bag of zip ties. Actually, a lot of zip ties came with it. So you can just tighten it out of the way. You don't want it to be on the back of the socket they get hot okay let's loop it that way easier Moves here let's connect to that And just like that, I have isolated it from away from the socket. And this is gonna stay there basically forever. <laughs> basically forever. Uh, unless this computer gets stolen. And I, if I had, I will do everything in my power to, you know, not have this one get stolen. Up to and including, uh, you know, defense of my property. This is Texas. Good luck. Better do it while I'm not here like they did last time. that out of the way okay cool now that's out of the way now this mess through here I need to go to the other side force it all back at the bottom of the case okay so this this came up. That's over there. This fan header come back. This goes back. And these and this and that and this. And these all get fed through. That's as much as that's going. That one's not going any more than that. Can you see this? Yeah, you can. Kind of. Okay. I like how that turned out. I wish this was right angle. Shove these cables back and these two as well. This one's already pretty good. So this one's just gotta be pulled. Okay, so that is managed there. Now this I'm going to tie down with a twist tie <clears throat> well, this cable comes down like this and it would go through that shroud and it would look like that so took the shroud off, 
because thermals over literally everything. Okay, now back to the back uh, for some uh, finishing up my cables. This is going to stay like that. That's there. Okay, and I'm actually just going to disconnect the power supply at this point in time. Uh, I'm pretty good. Okay, so that's tied out of the way. Now this bundle of cables. They're all going to be, this goes down, down. I'm gonna go ahead and, and tie these off here. With a zip tie. Nope, come on zip tie. Nope, zip tie, where are you going? All this crap is gonna get zip tied. Uh, I'm just gonna use one though. Yeah, let's just do one. Okay. way no need to trim these back probably gonna reuse a lot of this stuff uh, well I can't reuse those but like I don't have a cutter or anything I'm not pulling scissors out <sighs> can you see what I'm doing no So this mess here needs to be squished down. Oh, what's this? Okay, that's the useless cable. These are the SATA and crap, the extra SATA that I'm not using at the moment at least. Oh, that should have been through this one. How did you escape? How did you escape? Buddy fucker. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay. Well, if I'm if I'm doing that, I might as well clip the excess off this one over here for the EPS. Okay, clipped. <clears throat> Give me another zip tie. And get all the cables this time. All the cables for all the good parts and all the good toys for all the good, you know, humans. Cool. And this 
push down, push down. It's got to clear the uh, side panel. Okay, another zip tie up here. <coughs> tie up here and go around that one. Oh, I went under. Over it. No, I don't want it to go over that part. Yeah, there we go. Like that. And Flip that bad boy. Keep these cables down. Cool, and snip snip. And a byproduct of that means that this mess here is already pretty flat. Let's make it the rest of the way flat. This little buddy bugger is in the way though. Rotate that down so it sticks through that hole. And one more zip tie. Okay, zip tie. Let's throw up here. And this mass of cables plus that stupid SATA. Okay, that's pretty flat. Uh, should be okay cable management wise. Okay, except for that little guy. Let's get him up here. Now this mess is usually hidden by the power supply shroud, but I, I don't care. I would rather have the performance. So, goes on the back it slides on like that just like that cables aren't pushing against it too bad nothing keeping it up two thumb screws go in the rear hold the panel on you can't see it right now Okay, and here's a okay, handheld time. Uh, this is what it looks like. See, it's not too bad. It doesn't look doesn't look bad at all like this. Um, the shroud would hide that, and I don't care. So there we go. Everything's hooked up. Now this is a MSI B450 Tomahawk Max. This is a Ryzen 5 1600 with the uh, Wraith Spire cooler. This is 16 gigabytes of Crucial DDDR4-3200. This is the Ballistics LT, Micron Rev-V, Samsung SM961 with a heat sink. That is the OEM version of the 960 Pro. This is a gigabyte GTX 1660 triple fan, sorry, triple fan card. 
And a Be Quiet uh, 500 watt, uh, this is the Pure Power 11. Um, and there's an Intel 545 512 gigabyte SSD on the rear. And that's it, I'm gonna put the glass side panel on and if there's a peel, I will show that. Okay guys, it's in the glass. There was uh, no peel, which is a little disappointing. Um, but here's what it looks like. It looks pretty good to me. Uh, power supply, of course, mounted the correct way in my opinion. Triple fan GPU, I'll probably only buy triple fan GPUs. There's 16 gigs of RAM for now. I'm gonna be upgrading to 32 eventually and maybe 64 if I exceed my needs of 32. Um, and yeah, that's where we're at. I'm going to install Windows. I'm not gonna show you a video of that. And um, I'm gonna go eat something, probably some Panda Express, I'm hungry. And I really want Chinese food. And I'll let you know what it looks like with the RGB and everything. Cause you know, fun stuff. All right, what's up gamers? We are back. It's been a while. It's Christmas and I bought myself more RAM. This is an identical RAM kit to what I already have. So let's double my RAM. The PC is off. Everything is disconnected. The power supply is switched off. It's still plugged in to provide an active ground. So you put the sticks in just like you do before, but now I fill the other slots. Oh, I have the BIOS set to optimize defaults and I have to figure out an overclock for all four sticks now instead of just two as before. So let's do this. Here's one stick of RAM. Still the right way, right? So only goes in one way. All right, I didn't have as near as a satisfying snap as I wanted. Everything is seated properly. Second stick of RAM. Ballistics. Ballistics only goes in one way. the top one in. Come on. It's a lot easier to do when there's nothing else in the case. Okay. Sure they're all seated. Four sticks of RAM, Crucial, Ballistics, DDR4, 3200. And I'm changing how my uh, fan cables are routed. I don't like how it is now. 
I just have them like coming across heat. Well, take that off. Here and that one is going to be it. I'm going to grab it out. Feed in the fan cables through. in there that goes in there then I will pull these through and fix the cable management and report back hey everyone you might be wondering why you're looking at a thing in OBS here and that is to show you here's OBS right I'm using 1.6% of my CPU. Well, that's kind of weird because I'm using 83% of my CPU right now. What in the world is going on? The video is not playing as you can see here. And I'm using 85% of my GPU. This much is being used to encode the OBS recording right now. This is being used to decode the video timeline because what I'm doing right now is called background caching. I am writing 154 megabytes per second on my Samsung SM961. And this is a sustained write and it's why I chose this drive. Most drives are not able to do this sustained long periods of time. They'll fill up the, their... Uh, uh, sorry, there's a term they use for it. I'm sick at the moment, so I'm all kind of foggy. Um, SLC cache. This drive does not have SLC cache. So it'll just write, it'll write its whole way until the drive is completely full. And then, uh, since it's the C drive, it'll basically crash when it's full. Uh, fun times that's happened to me, uh, in making this video, learning settings and stuff. Anyways, background caching. I have all 32 gigs of my RAM just completely maxed. Uh, all of it's cached right now. I'm using 10 and a half gigs. I've used uh, about 16, which is why I bought 32, uh, which is why I bought an additional 16 to get 32. I'm running it at 2933, which is um, AXMP profile one for this RAM. It's the only thing I could get stable. I have my CPU running at 3.8 gigahertz. It is a Ryzen 5 1600. And my GPU is, um, here's my MSI afterburner settings. Uh, it has a curve applied, which is plus 76 average. Um, it, this is done by the overclock scanner here in the MSI afterburner utility. I have the fan speed set to auto. You might be able to hear them right now. They're running because my GPU is being used uh, in the background render. Voltage, uh, temp, and power limiters maxed out. Memory at plus 999, which is the highest I could get it without any artifacts inside uh, superposition. But anyways, let me show you how this works um, inside DaVinci Resolve. Um, let me just make sure that goes back there. So I'm using 
uh, gigabytes of my VRAM at this exact moment. I have used as much as 5.873 gigabytes. I need more VRAM badly. Um, Puget Systems recommends eight gigabytes of VRAM. I thought I could get away with six. Oh, I'm cutting it close. And this is just HEVC uh, iPhone 8 4K 60 footage. Uh, yeah, anyways, let's turn background rendering off. This is real simple. Um, when it's on smart mode, it does it in the back. When it's on user, I tell it to do it. So now that I've turned it on user, my CPU and my GPU are going to drop. The GPU is not going to go to idle because I am encoding this video uh, right now. So let's show you some playback. So right here, this is playing back proxy mode off. Use optimized media if available. This is HEVC. All the blue is optimized media, which is in this case DNX HRHQ in original resolution. And the red is non optimized media. So anywhere that the red's not over is non optimized media as well. Oh, and I'm playing it back, so I can't do it. Uh, so I can't scroll. So uh, I'm using 33%. Ah, uh, wait, is that right? Proxy mode off. Huh, seems to be playing back remarkably well at this exact moment. Uh, usually it doesn't do so hot. Um, when proxy mode is set to quarter resolution, which is what I normally do, um, my CPU is not being used like at all. And my GPU is doing all the heavy lifting, which is what I was my plan. Right now I'm using a third of my RAM, not a big deal. Uh, I'm not background caching, so the only writing activity right now is the recording of this video. Um, however, proxy mode off is supposed, from what I've seen in the past, huh, it's not doing it right now. That's weird. Come on, guys, I'm trying to demonstrate stuff for a video. All right. All right, well, it's not doing it right now. Well, usually I'm getting like this much CPU usage on just playback, playback and um, video rendering. See this in the blue here is optimized media and the red is not optimized. And it's not that smooth because it's full resolution 4K and I don't know why it's not hammering my CPU. It usually absolutely smashes the CPU. It's just not for this recording. But proxy mode a quarter, boom, perfectly smooth. Well, mostly perfectly smooth. And yep, all CPU, GPU. So that is uh, the actual hard performance out of the way. What do you need? You need RAM. You need... VRAM, uh, in my opinion, you need a high quality encode and decode engine in your GPU. You need enough CPU. I wouldn't go any lower than a Ryzen 5 1600 that I have here. Let's, um, let's pause this. Actually, let's let um, proxy mode off and render cache to smart. Let's let it background render. Um, you might hear the fans ramp up. Yeah, here we go. 82%, 83% of my GPU. Let's let this render in the background some more um, while I finish this up. Uh, there's no need to do this. I don't have to do it. In fact, it absolutely fills the drive up like crazy uh, super quickly. Let's see. Users, me. Oh, yeah, video. 
This is cash clip. This is the uh, cash drive. We take a look at the properties here. It's 145 gigabytes. And let's take a look at the properties again. 146 gigabytes. It is absolutely slamming the drive. This is a constant write speed. Um, and this is only a one terabyte SSD. And I'm using half of this right now is just cache. I'll let it go, but I'm gonna stop it before it fills it up all the way because I don't wanna have that issue again. Uh, it'll just crash everything. It's not a good time. So what about benchmarks? Well, you might be wondering, uh, I did a lot of stability testing. Um, let's take a look at some benchmarks that you can download for free and compare your system right now against mine. Uh, this is my old computer. I have my results saved. I didn't buy the full version of 3D Mark, PC Mark, and VR Mark until uh, the Steam Summer Sale, which was after my computer was stolen. So sad. Anyways, um, as you can see, my old computer outperforms my new computer. Uh, my old GPU was stronger. My old CPU was stronger in some aspects and weaker in others. Uh, it's weaker in multi-core, but it's stronger in single core and other workloads of that such. So this is Time Spy. Let's take a look at all the, the specs here just so you can see them. Yeah, this is a HP pre-built. I have double the memory now. This Fuse drive was a software program I was experimenting with. I ended up having a lot of issues with it and um, uh, Emotus did refund it so I didn't have to pay for the software that wasn't working properly. I might have had a one-off bug, who knows. It was four cores now, I have six cores. Four cores then, I have six cores now. Uh, my turbo clock, this one is 4.2, where my current one, well, it's I have it at 3.8. Um, uh, drivers are different, of course, because different places in time. My VRAM is different. I have six gigs now. I had eight gigs then. I wish I could afford the 2060 Super. I'd have eight gigs now, uh, but such is life. This is VR Mark. Uh, do do open all the stuff up. So my old computer was faster in this benchmark. It just is the more single core oriented stuff of uh, that old computer of the Ryzen, uh, sorry, of the i7-7700. Anyways, this is, was my old uh, drive, 500 gig Samsung 960 Evo. I uh, hope whoever stole it is enjoying that thing because it was expensive when I purchased it in 2017. And here's PC Mark 10. My old computer still outdid my new computer. Uh, however, my new computer does have twice the RAM. So in some aspects, it is better. In other aspects, it's not. Um, it's all this different stuff here in the PC Mark 10 uh, benchmark. You can see sometimes it's dramatic. Other times it's not. It just really depends. It's like a sometimes that sometimes... Uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say right now. Uh, like a he said, she said type moment where, yes, my old computer was faster in, in most aspects, and then this one's faster in certain aspects as well uh, while tying in others. So overall, my NVIDIA GTX 1660 is better as a YouTuber than my uh, 1070 was because of the better encoder. And I believe the, in, the decoder as well. These are two hardware chips on the GPU. Um, so I should have higher quality uh, streams if I choose to stream from the GPU, which I will. And uh, my GPU, physical GPU is a lot better. It's a triple fan card, way quieter. If you guys remember some of the PC games I played before, those fans were, that, was, that blower card in that computer was so loud, you could hear it on the video, uh, over my mic, over everything. Um, so yeah, uh, that's just some, some of what I'm doing here. 
As you can see, it's uh, just background rendering away, but I can turn that off real quick. I can set it to quarter resolution, and in quarter resolution, it'll stop the background rendering. I'm not sure why. I'm pretty sure it should still do it, but it's not, uh, which for me is fine. It's kind of what I wanted to do anyways. So thanks for coming by this, guys. I'm going to end this video with a uh, maybe short little some B-roll footage, I guess is what people call it, of the physical computer itself. And that's it. Thanks for watching.